Hello guys and welcome back. In this video I'm going to talk about the right atrium. If you want to know how to assess the right atrium with the cocardiography, just keep watching. So let's start. The right atrium is one of the four chambers of the heart. The heart is comprised of two atriums and two ventricles. Blood enters the heart through the two atriums and exits through the two ventricles. The oxygenated blood enters the right atrium through the inferior and superior vena cava. The right side of the heart then pumps this deoxygenated blood into the pulmonary arteries around the lungs. So, how can we assess the right atrium? Echocardiography is a great tool to assess the right heart size and estimate the right atrial pressure. All views should be used in order to assess the right atrium. However, assessment of the right atrium is best performed from the apical four chamber view, right ventricular focused view, and subcostal view. The following are the views we can use to assess and visualize the right atrium. On the left, you can see the apical four chamber view. Also, you can use the right ventricular focus view and obtain it from this position. On the right hand side, you can see where the right atrium is located from the subcostal view. You can use two more views to assess the right atrium. On the left hand side, we have the right ventricular inflow view. And on your right hand side, you can see where the right atrium is located in the parasternal short axis view at the aortic valve level. The right atrial size is a reflection of right sided filling pressure and volume. The most frequent causes of right atrial enlargement are atrial fibrillation and tricuspid regurgitation. Isolated right heart enlargement should always raise the question of whether interatrial shunting is occurring. And the search for an atrial septal defect should be undertaken with intravenous silent contrast if necessary. By atrial enlargement can occur with atrial fibrillation or with restrictive cardiomyopathy. Assessment of both the right atrium and the inferior vena cava is important in the estimation of right atrial pressure, which is essential for calculating pulmonary artery systolic pressure from tricuspid regurgitant velocity. Qualitative evidence of elevated right atrial pressure includes a dilated right atrium, dilation of the inferior vena cava, or attenuation of inferior vena cava collapse during inspiration. Several methods have been used to estimate right atrial pressure by echocardiography, but most involve a combination of inferior vena cava size and the amount that the inferior vena cava collapses with inspiration. Less research and fewer clinical outcomes data are available on the quantification of right atrial size. Several methods can be used in order to assess the right atrial size. Although the right atrium can be assessed from different views, quantification of right atrial size is most commonly performed from the apical four chamber view. 
we can assess the right atrial size by a linear dimension method. The first linear dimension method is measuring the minor axis of the right atrium. The minor axis dimension should be taken from a plane perpendicular to the long axis of the right atrium, extending from the lateral border of the right atrium to the interatrial septum. The second linear dimension method for the assessment of the right atrial size is measuring the long axis of the right atrium. The long axis dimension should be taken from the tricuspid valve annulus to the roof of the right atrium. In order to assess the right atrial size, we can also use a planimetry method. We can use planimetry to obtain the area and volume of the right atrium. As with the left atrium, the right atrial area and volumes are likely to be more robust and accurate for determination of right atrial size compared with linear dimensions. Because there are no standard orthogonal right atrial views to use for an apical biplane calculation, a single view area length end or disk summation techniques are used for right atrial volume determination. The right atrial area and volume is measured in the apical four chamber view or right ventricular focus view at the end of ventricular systole on the frame just prior to the tricuspid valve opening. Volumetric measurements are more robust and accurate when compared with linear measurements. That's why it's better to measure straight away the area and the volume of the right atrial size when we are performing our echocardiogram. So I'm going to show you how to measure the right atrial size step by step. When you measure the right atrial area, you automatically obtain the right atrium volume. So the first step will be finding your apical four chamber view or your right ventricular focus view. A dedicated right heart view from a view that includes the entire right atrium should be used for acquisition to ensure the right atrium is not foreshortened. The second step will be to freeze the image at the end of ventricular systole. The right atrium should be measured at end ventricular systole when the right atrial chamber is at its greatest dimension, on the frame just prior to the tricuspid valve opening. The third step will be to trace the right atrium from the plane of the tricuspid valve annulus along the interatrial septum, superior and lateral walls of the right atrium. The right atrium should also be maximized. When performing planimetry of the right atrium, trace the right atrial inner border excluding the area under the tricuspid valve annulus and the confluences of the right atrial appendage. Let's measure the right atrium. Find your apical for chamber view and maximize the right atrium. Now freeze the image at the end of ventricular systole, on the frame just before the tricuspid valve opening. Select the right atrial area or the right atrial volume on the measurement package and just start to trace the right atrium along the inner edge. Trace from the tricuspid annulus along the lateral wall, along the roof, 
along the interatrial septum to the tricuspid annulus again. And you will obtain the right atrial area and volume. These are the normal right atrial area values and the normal right atrial area index values for females and males, according to the British Society of Echocardiography. Here you can see the normal right atrial minor axis dimension values for females and males and also the normal right atrial long axis dimension values for females and males according to the American and European Society of Echocardiography. Also we have normal values for volumes. Index right atrial volumes based on volumetric assessment are similar to left atrial volumes in healthy men and are slightly smaller in healthy women. Here you can see the normal right atrial volume index values for females and males according to the American and European Society of Echocardiography. Now let's talk about anatomic variants. Anatomic variants are particularly common in the right atrium and can often simulate pathologic entities. During cardiac development, embryonic sinus venosus fuses with trabecular right atrium appendage. The right sinus valve of embryonic sinus venosus normally regresses forming the crista terminalis and the eustachian valve. Such regression process is highly variable. Incomplete regression results a spectrum of vestige, like the Chiari network, Eustachian valve of inferior vena cava, the Tebesian valve of the coronary sinus, and a prominent crista terminalis. Let's talk a bit more about the most common anatomic variants. First, the Eustachian valve. The Eustachian valve is a remnant of embryonic valve of inferior vena cava. Eustachian valve appears as crescent-like fold of variable size at posterior margin of inferior vena cava. In echocardiography, leaf-like linear structure is shown at the junction of inferior vena cava and right atrium. The right ventricular inflow view, subcostal view, and transesophageal echo is diagnostic because such windows can visualize both the Eustachian valve and inferior vena cava in the same imaging plane. Occasionally, prominent Eustachian valve appears to divide the right atrium into two chambers, making apparent cortria tratum dexter. Such condition is hemodynamically insignificant in most adults, because the septation by the Eustachian valve is generally incomplete. Another anatomic variant is the Chiari network. Chiari network is a thin web-like fenestrated membrane that attaches along the ridge connecting the inferior vena cava and interatrial septum. It is found in 2 to 3% of normal heart at autopsy. In echocardiography, Chiari network appears as a free floating curvilinear structure that waves with blood flow in the right atrium. Chiari network is thought to a variant of Eustachian valve. A part of Chiari network arises from the orifice of inferior vena cava like Eustachian valve, 
but carry network is much more mobile and thinner. In echocardiography, carry network may be confused for tricuspid vegetation, flail, tricuspid valve, and free right atrial thrombus. Chiari network has little clinical significance, but it might cause trouble during percutaneous procedures. And the third most common anatomic variant is the crista terminalis. Crista terminalis is a well-defined fibromuscular ridge and may be confused for right atrial tumor on transthoracic echocardiography. By cable view on transesophageal echo best visualizes the crista terminalis. Thrombus in the right atrium may mimic anatomic variants. Clinical settings will help a diagnosis. The presence of atrial arrhythmia including atrial fibrillation, low flow status including right ventricular failure, and the presence of foreign body favor the likelihood of thrombus. Migrating free thrombus appears highly mobile, snake-like structure mimicking Chiari network. However, migrating thrombus is thicker than the Chiari network, and the end of thrombus is not fixed around the inferior vena cava orifice. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. Bye!